It's Monday. I'm Pete Nigerian. This is The Take on Market Rebellion. And wow, you want to talk about a bumpy, choppy, volatile week last week. We certainly had all of that. And as a matter of fact, choppy is probably the best way to describe it. Just the moves intraday were absolutely extraordinary throughout the week last week. As a matter of fact, you look at the volatility index itself, it's trading somewhere between 30 and maybe even call it as high as 37. Probably a little bit lower than that because there are just very minor moments in time where we'd seen some of that lower end and the upper end. But we certainly have a, a lot of volatility remains in the marketplace right now. As a matter of fact, we went out last week somewhere between 34 and 35, somewhere in that kind of a range. But starting out the week over 26,000 and finishing the week just barely above 25,000, a lot of that really coming in the final day of the week on Friday this past week. Thursday, another crazy day as well. On, on, on Thursday, markets were moving all over the place, and then there was that very late surge to the upside to get ourselves a pretty nice rally at the end of the day in that final hour. Well, Friday, certainly the pressure was on. The pressure was on early. We were down anywhere between 600 and 700 points, finishing down over 730 points but a big push to the downside. And for a lot of the different reasons, one of which is certainly the focus on the coronavirus, some of the outbreaks and some of the store closings, as well as some of those governors walking back some of the reopening aspects of what's been going on as COVID numbers continued to increase and a lot of reaction because of that. So we certainly have had a bumpy, crazy, wild week. As a matter of fact, on Friday, you take a look at the financials, the financials, we're sort of the driving force uh, looking to it on Thursday and on Friday, driving force again. Thursday, driving force to the upside. Friday, pulling it down to the downside, certainly leading the charge there. When you have Goldman Sachs down over 8%, JP Morgan down about 5.5%. These are massive companies in the financial industry. American Express down about 4.5%. But it wasn't just those big names. It's Capital One, it's Regions, it's Comerica, across the board financials were getting pounded. And so that was something that really added to it. And throw in the fact that Nike, one of the bigger names, obviously down name, everybody looking at Nike and you look at a company like this and you see a miss as much as it was for Nike. Now, certainly the online part of the, 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 the report was very strong, but this is a company that's so massive. They've got to have all of their entities, especially given the fact that in my opinion, it had been somewhat priced to perfection. They were not in a position to miss. They missed in a big way. Stock was pushed significantly to the downside, and that was a lot of what was contributing as well. But it wasn't just financials. When you look at a market down 700 plus points, you're just looking to try to find some sort of green. As a matter of fact, I think there was one Dow stock that actually did finish in the green. Everything else was just deep, deep red, and that was certainly concerning. Well, today, we had another bumpy start, except for in a positive way. The markets were, were were pushing and pulling, but up 100, up 50, up 250, up all of this in the pre-market just to get to the opening bell and then opening up over 225 points, then pulling back. And as that pullback really started to shift, then the markets, you take a look over at the NASDAQ. Now, the NASDAQ has been outperforming. We all know that. But the NASDAQ actually getting slammed at one point, down about three quarters of a percent. And then this big turnaround once again, and markets flying to the upside. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you, give you a quick update right now. So we are approximately right now just barely an hour into the trading session. And I'm looking at the Dow up almost 350 points. I'm also looking at the NASDAQ, which was in the red. And like I say, down three quarters of a percent has completely flipped. And now up about, oh, four tenths of a percent or call it close to 40 points. So a huge turnaround there. Absolutely massive turnaround. That is why when we look at the volatility index and I say to people all the time, it's a great measurement of what we are seeing in the marketplace. Just look at the movement that we are seeing. Now, I know the VIX itself is me measuring the S&P, but it does give you the broader sense of what's going on with the S&P. You, you can read into what's going on in the Dow and obviously into the NASDAQ as well. And you take a look and you see these dramatic moves, absolutely extraordinary moves. It does tell you a lot. So volatility index is trading right around that 35 level. Now, the leaders early today were in the industrial sp space primarily. It was a big move out of a big name like Boeing, Raytheon, Dow, 
those kind of names. Then the material names as well. You look at gold, you look at steel, you look at iron ore, those all actually starting to buoy and starting to push to the upside. And then the financials bouncing back. And so the combination of all that, the financials weren't screaming to the upside by any stretch, but up a little less than 1% as the rest of the, when you looked over at some of those NASDAQ names were into the red, it did show just the huge divergence of movement right now in the marketplace. As a matter of fact, what was dragging on the Dow? A lot of those names that everybody really sort of refers to right now as the coronavirus type names. Zoom, Workday, those kind of names, you get the idea. As a matter of fact, when I looked over at the chip space, which has been on fire and moving to the upside, now it's well off of the high, decently off of the highs. But I looked over at the chip space when things were starting to really turn. Wow, some of those names really did go red in a big way. You look at AMD, Intel, Qualcomm, NVIDIA, those kind of names all down. And you looked over at the SMH, that was down about 1%. And that was while the financials were still holding on. Industrials were still holding on. Now, as I say, we've reversed and we have a nice big solid move across all the major indices. As a matter of fact, S&P up about three quarters of a percent right now. And the rest of the names still kind of holding in where they were. Volumes have been extremely impressive extremely impressive. Another day where we had over 30 plus million just this past week. So June has been a monster month for volumes. Absolutely a monster. And we've been talking about it day after day after day. Now there have been a couple of days where we've been well off of those June averages. But overall, when you look at the, the, the main numbers across the board and average them out for the month of June, really just an, a spectacular amount of volumes. And that's why we are here, folks. It's why I always talk about education. It's why I always try to bring up derivatives are the market of growth. And when you look within the markets, this is the area and you've got the opportunity for leverage and risk tolerance. You have risk ways to reduce risk. So that's a lot of the reasons why we are so excited each and every day because the movements can be affected both up and down. And it's just been an extraordinary time. Facebook on Friday, by the way, a lot of the heat coming down. Facebook definitely pushing pretty strong. But when you look at Facebook, it's where it was at March 18th or May 18th. So when, you, when, when folks are running around like their hair's on fire, let's just put everything to perspective. Facebook had this screaming run to the upside, hit up to 245. Dramatic pullback, a lot of that having to, in just one month, and a lot of that having to do with a lot of the issues that they are facing right now and how they're going to deal with some of the content on the site and all the rest of that. All these people talking about July, we're going to, in protest, in boycott, we are not going to be advertising. All of that, Zuckerberg is going to have his work cut out for him. There's no doubt about it and the Facebook staff. But in the meantime, let's not overplay this either. This is where the stock was on May 18th, around $212 a share. Today, it's trading right around $212 up to $214, somewhere in that sort of a range. So I don't think it's it's an, a situation where a lot of folks need to panic as much as we are hearing. But, you know, if it bleeds, it leads. And that's what we hear all the time. And it's so true oftentimes. We see that happening and playing out in front of us almost on a daily basis. So Facebook, yep, it was down early, down about 3% three or so, and then started rallying back fairly rapidly back towards where we had closed on Friday off of a pretty tough Friday down about 8 or so percent. So each and every day we talk about an unusual option activity. I'm going to give one right now. <laughs> I'm going to give you On Semiconductor. Now, this is a name that hits here and there and, and fairly frequently with us, and it's been consistently one of the better ones. That doesn't mean it's going to work. doesn't mean anything. All I'm just saying to you is consistently this has been one of the names where when I see it, I jump in. I'm already in, and I can tell you this right now. Stock was trading about $18.95, so just under $19 a share. Semiconductor stock, once again a buyer of 18,000 of the July 21 calls. So a couple dollars out of the money from where it was trading, just under 19, these are the 21s, paid about 45 cents all the way up to about 80 cents. So that was the range. That's where the price was at the time of this trade. Always something that's very important because there are times where these just can run just so fast that you just gotta, gotta hold your hands up and say, you know what, I'll look for the next one. But anyway, Pointing that out, that's a pretty large trade, 18,000 contracts. Very early in the trading session in the first hour, that was one of the names. We had a couple other names that were hitting as well. Not quite as busy as may be expected. However, let's also remember, shortened week. So that's something to keep in mind all week long with the shortened week, Friday off, obviously 4th of July. 
Just keep that in mind as we start getting a little bit closer. Today, I'm not as worried, worried about that. As we get a little bit further into the week, we have to be conscious of that day that will not be any trading. So keep that in mind. Folks, have a great day of trading. Hopefully you had a phenomenal week weekend. And now we're looking forward to a great week as we head into the holidays. Folks, have a great day of trading.